Hi, welcome or welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm gonna be rebuilding this Sears three and a half ton floor jack. This floor jack was built in 1994. As of the filming of this video, it's 30 years old. I'm gonna go through the process of disassembling it and replacing the rubber seal and O-rings that allow this thing to function properly. It will go up, but it will not stay up. And it won't stay up under its own weight. And with a load on it, it wouldn't stay up at all. So it needs to be rebuilt. It's not a hard process. If you watch the video, and you see how this one's done, you're gonna be able to rebuild any floor jack that you want to. So if you wanna go out and buy an older floor jack, get the rebuild kit for it, you'll be able to do that and save yourself some money. So this video is not sponsored, but I will have links in the description where you can purchase things like the rebuild kit. I got this one from eBay. They're available on Amazon, eBay, and other places. I will have links in the description. If you use my link, I get a small commission. It doesn't add on to the price that you pay for the product, but it does help me out. It helps out the channel a little bit. We'll start taking this apart. We want to make sure that we, we know how to put it back together. So we'll take a bunch of pictures. I was lucky enough to find this one that had been taken really good care of. The gentleman bought it brand new and he even gave me the manual from 30 years ago. And it'll be working long past when I'm, I'm not around anymore. My wife will sell this at a yard sale someday when I'm pushing up daisies and some other guy will be using this to change a tire or or work on his vehicle. So let's get into it. I'll start taking this apart, show you how it's done. The handle actually turns these gears and that's what relieves the pressure. But I'm gonna start with it down here like this. So this part of the jack right here is called the power unit. And this piston, it's called the plunger. And that's what pushes oil into the cylinder and pressurizes the cylinder and, and raises the arm. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove these two springs in here. They're really powerful. So try to get that. Okay, well, those are out. I'll open the valve and let the jack come back down. Now that I got those springs removed, I need to remove this power unit assembly, but to do that, I need to remove this handle assembly. I'm gonna use this 27 millimeter socket. And this is the spring that goes on this side, and this bolt is gonna be different than the bolt on the other side. Now let's take the other side off. Little helper handle. Let's compare these two bolts. You can see the difference in them. So we gotta make sure that we get these back the way they're supposed to be. Now I can remove the handle assembly. So this is a speed lift lever. I'm gonna put this in the bin. I got the handle assembly off. We got another spring right here. This bolt actually has a shoulder on it that held this in. You wanna remember that this spring goes in just like this. Now we can remove this shaft and this is what pumps the oil up. There's a couple of O-rings and seals in here that need to be, be changed. Now we gotta start thinking about collecting some of this oil. So I've got the oil filler plug here too. So now I've removed that shaft. I'm gonna also remove the oil filler plug. We'll put this in the little parts bin. This jack has a little heft to it. See how much oil it can get out. We'll let that drain. So looking at this, you'll notice it looks a lot like a bottle jack. This would be your bottle jack portion and this is your ram piston that goes up and down. So I'm gonna remove this cotter pin from the ram and that'll let this loose from this portion that holds the ram and then we'll remove the bolts from the power unit and that should just come out. So here's the other side of the cotter pin. So when you're working on these, they're heavy and they got a bunch of moving parts that could be pinch points. You want to definitely make sure you don't get caught in one of those pinch points. That pin's out, so now that's that ram is free. With that cotter pin removed, now this part's free to move and I'll be able to take four bolts out of the power assembly unit and remove that. So I'm going to flip this over. So there's four 19 millimeter bolts, two on this side and two on this side that hold this power unit assembly in. You might notice looking at this jack that this thing is in really good condition. It's gonna be just like a brand new jack by the time I'm done. We'll just put these in the parts bin, make sure we don't lose anything. Now a power unit assembly should slide out. Here's my two springs that retract the jack when it's coming back down, help it come down faster. See if we can dump a little more oil, let that drain a while. So now that the power unit assembly is removed, disassembling this part to get in to replace the wiper and the seal and the O-rings. So just to go over quick, this is where the plunger was. Inside here are two O-rings and two wipers that need to be replaced. This is the release valve right here. The gears mesh together and turn this to, re to release the valve to turn the jack on and off. In here is a ball bearing or a couple ball bearings that when you pump the jack up, the ball bearings go out of the way 
let the fluid in, but they don't let the fluid come back down. So your jack doesn't go back down until you turn the release valve and open a different valve. This in here has a, a metered needle valve that is set at the factory. We don't need to mess around with that. If I take this cover off, you'll see there's another cover inside that covers a needle valve and a spring. And that does not need to be adjusted as, lo as long as the jack is working just right when we get it all repaired and get oil back in it. Um, if you did take that out, you take this cover off, you start, take the nut out that's underneath there, the other cover. If you do, what you do is you, you count how many revolutions that it took to get it out and then you put it back in exactly the same way. If you do rebuild a jack and Curiosity gets the best of you and you want to see what's in there. So this is also also made of several different parts. This, this, this cast block here that has pathways through it for the oil to run and for the other mechanisms to work. This tube here is separate from this nut and this nut needs to come off. Taking this nut off is, is very difficult because at the factory they really put these on torque these on hard. These are torqued on very hard, so they're difficult to get off. I had to take I had to take this up to my friend's house and I got this loosened and that way we can get and change the seal on the ram under here and the o-rings that are inside here. And there's also a little screen that we want to check and my little harbor freight uh, vice it's fine for working on bicycle parts and small items, but for holding this and applying the torque that's required to get this I had to go up to my friend's house. He's got some big pipe wrenches and a big uh, Craftsman vise, and he helped me get this off. So let's take a look at just how we loosened this cap. Then we'll come back here and start disassembling the, the power unit on the bench here. If you guys are enjoying the video, hit that thumbs up, give me a like, consider subscribing to the channel, and definitely leave me a comment down below. All that really helps out, helps grow the channel, and makes it all worthwhile. Whew, that thing is on tight. So that's what you need. Let me get this. You probably should heat it up too before we do that. Try, try it without heating it up. Okay. We don't have that many hands. <laughs> I don't want to sound bossy. That's all right. <laughs> Let me Let get me, a good hold of it before you. When you're ready. Ready? I got it. Go ahead. Oh, oh, wait a minute. It didn't work too well. Probably not tight enough. You could even try it with a crescent. Uh, get it a little tighter and once I get it tighter it might work there we go okay let's see ready I got it. oh wait a minute nope nope, it, nope. It no I was right holding here. it the wrong way that's why I should have been holding it this way oh no that's fine we'll get it you got ready yeah there yeah you goes. got it you got it perfect just took up enough leverage yeah absolutely <laughs> I can't believe this thing. Careful, it might be hot. No, you know what? That's the trick. You get enough leverage. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know. I really appreciate it, man. Oh, no. So no. now we're back on my bench, and we've got the nut loosened. Let's take this nut off and see what's inside here. We can start rebuilding this. Here is the main culprit for why this jack won't work. This seal, wipe, I call it a wiper seal, has gotten very rigid over the years. The last one I, I rebuilt, this had actually disintegrated and there was parts of it inside the, the jack that I had, I had to worry about making sure to get out. Um, this one's not in such a bad shape, but it is cracked. You can see there's a small, hopefully you can see that there's a uh, small crack. Wouldn't be, there you go, right there you can see. It's about ready to come apart. Um, there's a plastic washer here. I don't have a new one of these plastic washers, but I do have this wiper seal. We'll replace that. There's an O-ring here at the top. This part I call the body. This is just a tube. It's machined and and it's welded. We got this part here. This is gonna stay in. I'm not gonna mess around with that. This is a little filter right here. So when the oil goes back in to the power unit assembly, screens out any kind of debris that might be in there. There's an opening in there that lets the oil, when you pump the jack up, the oil comes in here and pressurizes this cylinder. Now we can take this, this assembly off the ram. You can see that there's a another O-ring right inside of here that needs to be replaced. We've got an O-ring outside, We've got an O-ring here. I'm just gonna do, maybe put a little air through here, clean this out, make sure everything's clean, there's no debris inside. This rebuild kit actually contains more parts than we're gonna use. I wanna just be really careful opening this because I don't want my knife to hit any of these O-rings. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna very carefully remove this old wiper seal. That's the old one. It's real brittle and that's why this jack really isn't working. Plastic washer we're gonna reuse. Now we got it all apart. Now I can put everything back together. But what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna put a touch of oil on everything when it's getting reassembled. Some hydraulic jack oil. Put the plastic washer back on. 
do a little bit of explaining with this seal and you can see the seal has a lip on it right here when the oil comes in it's going to hit here it's going to pressurize this seal it's going to push this little rim out to the edge of this tube right here that's going to make a seal and it's going to push the the ram up allow the pressure of the oil to push the ram up when you release the valve it's going to let it come back down pretty ingenious part i'll just pop the new wiper seal back on get that there we go. Got that snapped down on there. So that's that's ready to be reassembled. The next thing I'm going to replace, there's an O-ring here in the top, which I already showed you, and this O-ring. I'm going to replace these. And these little picks come in real handy for this kind of stuff. I'm going to do my O-rings one at a time here, try to find the one that's the right diameter and the right circumference. And it's important to remember which one's the old one. So I'm here to replace all these O-rings with new ones. I don't want to put the old one back in. This is the old one. The kit comes with four O-rings, the same circumference, but a different thickness or diameter. There's two thicker ones and two thinner ones. But when I take my part here that needs a new O-ring and I place that O-ring in there, it looks like it fills up the space pretty well. So I'm gonna use the thicker O-ring here on that one. I got this O-ring here. We'll take this one off. Here's my old one. I'll do the same thing. I'll just match this up. But I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use both thicker O-rings. And just like with any O-ring, I'm gonna put a little oil on it. Get this one out. Reinstall the new o-ring and this could go back together now on the ram So now the seal is replaced on the ram o-rings replaced on the outside of this big nut and inside here The o-ring that seals the ram and this big nut those are all replaced So this is this is ready to go back together when we put the tube back on we want to make sure the filler hole is in the right location So that's how that filler tube wants to look that does not want to go down that good get our ram reinstalled So I'm beginning to wonder, because this is being so difficult to get back together, maybe I should have used my, my thinner O-rings that came in the package. So I'm going to try to give that a try. I chose the thicker O-ring down here. I'm going to go ahead and put it in the thinner one and see if that makes a difference. See what this thinner O-ring looks like. This doesn't look like it fills up the slot quite the way I'd like it to. It's still a nice tight fit before I couldn't get these threads to reach and hopefully this time I will and this will all start going together. And I've got some match marks and I'll see how tight I can get it here in my little vise. I went ahead and set up my power unit of my jack here in my little Harbor Freight vise. It's not very big vise, but I'm going to try to maximize its utility by using this large pipe wrench. But I'm going to use the bench here as a dead man because I don't have a third hand to hold the wrench for me. And hopefully I'll be able to get it back at least pretty close to where it was when I started. May need to try to get a little more leverage on this crescent. I had to do a little bit of what you might call redneck engineering here. I've got my Harbor Freight Badlands jack there, and that's holding the end of my wrench. Is I didn't have a pipe big enough to go around this, this crescent, so I clamped a piece of conduit, an old piece of conduit I had laying around the garage, onto it. Here's my wrench extension conduit. And I made a little progress so far. I gave myself a lot more leverage. I'm way out here now. Definitely working. I'm moving that nut. Had to readjust my setup. Got a new bite here, different angle. I'm very, very close. I'm within an eighth of an inch now where I started. My pipe is bending. I'll take that, but I'll try to get that one eighth of an inch. All right, got it. Okay, you can see my match marks right here. I made it totally torqued on exactly where I was when this thing was brand new. I'm gonna replace the filler cap now just to make sure I don't get any debris or anything in here and screw it up. This is the opening where the plunger goes. The plunger is this part that pumps up the jack. There's two O-rings and seals in there, or two O-rings and wipers. They're gonna be replaced by these brand new ones. You can see them in there. The wiper is on top of the O-ring. It's all in one groove there, two sets. So now we'll just work on replacing these. It's difficult, but it's possible. I've done this once before on another one. First things first with these is get the old ones out. Here we go. We got one. You got a groove here and then another groove down here. And that's where the new O-rings and wipers go in. It's a little bit of a trick to get them in. 
Okay, I got one O-ring in, and now, now I'll try to get this wiper in. The wiper is going to go right on top of the O-ring. Okay, the new bottom wiper and seal are in place. Okay, I managed to get my two O-rings and two new wipers in. I went ahead and oiled up the new O-ring and the, the wipers inside the plunger shaft. I installed the plunger here. That'll stop anything from getting in that opening while I'm re reassembling the jack. With all the O-rings, wipers, and seals replaced, now it's time to reassemble the jack. I started by putting these springs back on because I know it's easier to get these on now. The way to put this together, the best way is probably to go ahead and set the jack on its side and open it up like this. Now hopefully we can squeeze this power block assembly right in. The jack is a little squished together, so we're gonna have to kind of shoehorn this in, get it started here. I use my rubber mallet. These are the 19 millimeter bolts. Now I'll carefully flip it over and get the other two bolts. Now we can hit these with the impact gun. Two more on this side. So the next thing I want to do is get the ram inserted into this opening right here. Might be a little easier if this ram is sticking out a little farther. And the way I can adjust this is by pulling the, the jack in. Right to there like that. I'll use my little pick like a drift pin here to see this hole is lined up. Yeah, should be able to get my cotter pin right through there. That should be pretty good. Now it's time to reassemble the jack handle and release gear assembly. Put the spring back in first. Now I'm gonna place the lever assembly in. Now we'll take the speedy lift lever. Okay, we got lucky on that side. Try tightening this side down and see if that helps line everything up. Time to get some oil in this jack because the filler plug is pretty difficult to get to. I got this syringe here and I can add oil, not make such a big mess. And I had already added some oil, so it's already full, but it's just letting oil out now and there's no air in it. Each time you pump the handle, it should go up about the same amount. We try the little helper handle here. The two last things that need to be done. There's one. Oh, there we go. Those help the jack retract down. Now comes the real test. Let's see if it can really do what it's supposed to be able to do. Try to pick up this Jeep. I don't really like picking the Jeep up by the diff, but it's probably the easiest way to show you guys. Now I'll give it a cool couple of good cranks. I have to say that that jack works. I'm not having any trouble picking up this Jeep. Let's leave it here for a couple minutes and then see if it stays up. And that'll be a pretty good test. Make sure there's no oil leaking out. Of well, it. my rebuilt floor jack is still holding up the Jeep. No puddles of oil or leaks or anything coming out of it. Thanks for watching the video. If you found it interesting, please hit that thumbs up button. Leave me a like. Leave me a comment. Any comment you have, make the video better. Any suggestions. And also consider subscribing to the channel. It really helps out and I really appreciate it. I'll see you on the next one. And don't forget, a Muddy Ruts, the best is yet to come.